So thank you everybody. I am Matt Kuznicki. I am a board member of the PDF Association as well as the Chief Technical Officer at Data Logics. And I'm here to kick off the, uh, the events of the next two days with a nice wet blanket. I'm here to take you on a journey through the history of PDF through a series of complaints that we've heard about it since its inception. I'm going to admit at the start of this that this is somewhat of a, an outsider's view of PDF. I was a, an outsider for a while. I guess I can't really say that anymore. Um, it's an admittedly biased history um, as I really cut my teeth on PDF through hearing cases about where things would go wrong, about things that PDF wasn't able to handle, and just ways that PDF, well, PDF's a great format, and it should go without saying that sometimes the more complaints you hear about something, that just means the better a thing that it is. So I'm going to take you on a tour of PDF from its humble beginnings through the, the adoption of PDF all around the world, through PDF's process of finding its strengths and growing into the dominant electronic document format that it is, some of the growing pains that it had along the way. We're going to talk about where PDF is in the world today, and finally, what the future holds for PDF. If you have questions, by the way, feel free to uh, jump in at any time or hold them to the end. Your pick. So, in the beginning, well, it wasn't really the beginning, but for all intents and purposes, there's no real, you know, past before the, the birth of PDF. So PDF was born. PDF was born as a format that took PostScript and learned from PostScript, took P PostScript's strengths, tried to leave behind its weaknesses, and to bring about a reliable document format for both the technical and for the business user. Optimized from the beginning for accurate and reliable visual representation of documents across a wide variety of environments. Targeted not just to the technical audience as PostScript had started out as, but starting out targeted towards a business audience. An audience at this point was crying out for a reliable way to get documents from one person to another, from one business to another, and actually interchange these reliably. PDF was born, PDF was great. Except the world didn't quite understand that at the time. Back then, this is mid-90s, you know, hair was different, music was different, yeah, everything was different. Back in this time, Raster images ruled the world like big, fat dinosaurs. They were generally accepted as perfectly good archives. I mean, they looked the same from machine to machine, except when they didn't, of course, but for the most part they did. So why, why do we need another format? The concept of having documents that could do more than just look like something wasn't really understood at the time. It would take the world quite some time to catch up to the notion that a document could both look reliably across environments and also have information that could be extracted reliably across environments. While PDF had been targeted towards the business user, it was also targeted towards you know, the technical and the, the print industries had existing investments, very large existing investments in PostScript and other print workflows. Investments in machinery, expertise, mindshare, 
And there wasn't really much differentiation between PostScript and PDF in the technical audience at that point. Value proposition just wasn't clear. So like any baby, it starts out cute, but it can't really do too much. Typical complaints, it's just another PostScript. Why do we need another image format? Nonetheless, another format that I can't edit in a text editor. How can I edit this? And finally, at the inception, the tools to view PDFs were not free. It cost quite a lot of money, and this caused quite a lot of consternation. I have to pay just to view these files? What gives? So let's say the start was a bit rocky, but we learned a lot of lessons as a community very quickly. To learn these lessons, Adobe decided to remove the charge for Act for a Reader, which was uh, definitely a great move to help drive the market. Tools started coming in, and the value proposition, the unique features of PDF, really started to become understood by the community. So PDF isn't just a better postscript. It's entirely different format. So things like security and encryption, the ability both to have a hard limit on who can open and work with a PDF, as well as a soft limit on the uses that one can put to a PDF, were quite new and revolutionary at the time for a document format. Character system support for multi-byte character systems, Unicode, leagues ahead of any other document format at that time. Color space compression support, the support for mixed color spaces and mixed compression formats in a document, quite revolutionary. Finally, we could have documents that were not all just one color space, not all just one compression format, but that actually could use the best compression, the best color space, the best way of representing data for each piece of data in the PDF. And all of this was with an open and published standard. Adobe gave this to the world, gave intellectual property license, and as long as you followed the restrictions and the rules set out in the PDF reference, you were free to implement PDF without fear of running over any patents, without fear of being sued. And it was a living standard at frequent updates that responded to the needs of the community. PDF starts to catch on. Features of Reader and Adobe Acrobat really drive adoption, both the free reader, and Exchange becoming Acrobat, coming down in price. And the plugin architecture that exists in Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Reader started out as a very wise move. It enabled an ecosystem of plugins and tools to come into Adobe Reader and Adobe Acrobat to really drive an ecosystem. So plugins not also for uh, PDF creation for common programs through Adobe's printer driver, as well as plugins to programs like Microsoft Office and others. And the plugins for PDF viewing with, within web browsers. We see adoption continue to increase as an ecosystem really starts to evolve around PDF as a file format. PDF starts to find its strengths by becoming a community effort. So as it adopts to the needs of the communities that it serves, PDF really comes into its own and becomes the dominant electronic document format as we had into the 2000s, in the middle of the 2000s. So for graphic arts and pre-press for business users, Really, the promise of archivability and reliable interchange, revolutionary. No more, you know, I'd like to display this document, but I'm missing this font. You know, no more, you know, 
you need a new version of Word to open this file. It's a reliable interchange enabled a lot of different processes to come, to the, to come into the world. Still, with the representation of all this information, both with visual accuracy and reliability, as well as the ability to repurpose and extract content from these files. But with anything that becomes popular, we hear complaints from the community. These complaints change as PDF becomes more widely adopted. So in this area, so the, in this era, PDF's about nine, ten years old, and complaints have become, well, why is support for non-Latin text so poor? We thought you said you support Unicode. The rest of the world, hello, we buy software too. How come? We have good visual layout that doesn't help blind users at all. What gives? Why can't I take my print investments and leverage them more effectively? I sank a lot of money into these workflows. Finally, how come there aren't many vendors other than Adobe for PDF tools? Now, I'm not saying these, uh, these complaints have, are grounded in fact. I'm just pointing out I think complaints many of us remember hearing at this time. This is where we start to see growing pains in PDF. PDF, as it becomes more broadly adopted, it becomes the source of more grumbling. Things like Adobe owning the specification for PDF. Well, why should I make my business so reliant on a standard that one company could take away overnight. Never mind, why should I make my business so reliant on a, on a specification that changes every few years, sometimes more frequently? And even when this standard doesn't change, not all tools interpret PDF in the same way. There's ambiguity. There's differences in interpretation. Some of these are just mistakes in interpreting PDF, but some of these are legitimate areas where ambiguity is to be expected. And this ecosystem also brings some complaints. Web browser components, great ideas, but we find that these become the target of issues for end users. And like anything, PDF with its flexibility, it's a great tool, but some things take that flexibility just too far. So it's perfectly good to have PDFs that are just pictures of scanned pages, but this really starts to undermine the credibility of PDF as a format that you can extract information from. The ability to make environment-specific PDF becomes abused perceived reliability of the format starts to suffer. The permissiveness of, of Acrobat and Reader with respect to PDFs they will interpret that have syntax problems. This leads to PDFs that become sometimes inoperable with other tools. And the publication of the PDF standard and its updates concurrent with Acrobat and with Reader updates always means that tools that aren't Reader or Acrobat or Adobe tools, they always tend to be behind. This leads to reliability problems. And in amongst this, PDF and success, dare I say, starts to get jealous of other successful formats. Tries to become everything to everybody. Now, Back in the mid-2000s, most of us remember that XML was the hot stuff, it was trendy, you know, it was the, the TLA, the three-letter acronym of the era. And PDF, it got jealous. So PDF, well, why don't we make an XML representation of it? That's a little out, in, out there in outer space, so we'll call it Mars. We'll, make, we'll invent a different way to express PDF syntax. How about forms? 
you know, we have a perfectly good way to express forms, but they're not really an XML, so let's find a different way. We'll call it XML forms architecture. We'll have a second way to express forms in PDF. It's, it's XML, so it's cool, right? Flash became trendy, and PDF, it got jealous. So it decided to bring Flash in. Let's make portfolios. Let's require a Flash interpreter to work with these. How about web browsers? They were trendy. PDF really wanted in. So, we br so PDF brought in links to external files, JavaScript that can execute when a file opens up, sometimes without the user even knowing. This leads to huge security problems, both real and admittedly some perceived, but perception is reality, and perception was this had become a huge security hole. The monetization of content, especially on the web, was all the rage. And PDF wanted in. So Yahoo, Adobe, AdSense integration, what a great idea. Let's make PDFs that when somebody opens them up, will call out and get targeted ads to their readers. Everything to everybody. In amongst all this, this creates mixed messaging about the strengths of PDF. Well, PDFs, we know, aren't just frozen documents, but actual tools to edit PDFs, they're very scarce at this point. PDFs are great for ebooks, but try reading one on your phone. Now, PDFs are great for long term preservation, so let's keep changing the standards every few years. PDFs are reliable, but not necessarily across different operating environments unless you take real care to make them that way. Looked like dark days for PDF. Well, not really, but as with everything popular, one gets its detractors. Typical complaints, if Adobe owns PDF, can't they change the terms at any time? Why are my PDFs entryways for viruses into my organization? Why do I need a virus scanner for a document format? Too many features only work in certain viewers. How come I can't reliably view and work with PDF features across different toolkits? And why are PDF viewers so error prone? Why, why, do, why do my web browsers crash too often when I'm reading PDFs? So I want to go off on a tangent for a second. I want to talk about something else going on in the world at this time. I want to talk about HTML, which went through many of these same problems. It came out about the same time as PDF. It's been, a, it's been with us for just about the same length of time went through many of the same growing pains. Differences in how viewers interpret it, syntactically bad files being written, plugin architectures helping to grow the ecosystem but leading to reliability problems, and HTML also trying to be everything to everyone. Well, what happened? The HTML community sat there and it refocused its efforts on being good at what it's good at, and letting other things be good at what other things are good at. It decided it can't be everything to everybody. This brings us back to PDF. The PDF in today's world, very important part. PDF is the standard for reliable document interchange, and is really the best standard for formal documents that need to be seen reliably by others, that need to be archived, that need to be retrieved as they exist right now by people in the future. There's increasing uh, use in, uh, in automated electronic data interchange, uh, such as Zoogford, which we heard about earlier today, as well as other formats. It's driving automated processes. And it is the standard for print and for where visual appearance is key. 
PDF's a community effort today. So Adobe gave the PDF standard to the international community in 2008, which is a, a great move. Opened up participation really to all interested parties who wanted a seat at the table. Adobe continues to play a very important role, but not the only role in PDF anymore. The international community continues working to refine PDF to be more useful and to be more standardized, especially with the efforts of PDF 2.0. And the community is spreading the best practices of PDF through organizations such as the PDF Association. PDF is not just a file format today, it really is a community effort. With that, comparisons to other formats are inevitable. So PDF, well, it's seen as a heavyweight and inconvenient format versus other formats. It's perceived as frozen, a final format that's uneditable. Indeed, we see many recommendations for pulling PDFs into workflows that say, why don't you just print it and scan it and OCR it, bring it back to life. Horrible advice, but that's the perception. Very complicated versus HTML and versus other formats. Never mind editing it with a text editor. Try to find an editor where you can reliably edit PDF, period. Can't even inspect it without specialized tools, or so the perception goes. Now, the past means the problems that we as a community have solved still linger. So PDFs are just enhanced rasters, right? Of course not. But the flexibility to make PDFs that are just rasters means that the file format, it gets the blame for these inept PDFs, shall we say. PDFs are insecure. No, that's not it at all. Applications are supposed to be secure, and application security has improved dramatically, but the format still allows for insecure, uh, insecure documents if an author wishes them to be. PDFs, they're unreliable across platforms. Well, best practices have really come a long way over the past decades. It's much easier to find information about the right way to make reliable PDFs but they're still outliers, and we still have to live with the files that have been created in the past. And all these things stick around, mean the PDF gets tagged as unreliable by some. It's not fair, I know, but that's, the, that's what the community, that's what we have to deal with. So now that I've throwing a wet blanket on everyone here. I want to talk about what the future holds. Bright, shiny, optimistic future. And I, I think it is an optimistic future. Because through the community and through the community ownership of PDF and its associated standards, we find PDF is steering back towards its strengths. So concerns that PDF will lose its purpose, horribly overblown. And while the while PDF 2.0 has been slow going, while the adoption of PDF 2.0 is going to be a slow process for a number of reasons, it's still going to be adopted. A reliable interchange relies on reliable file formats. It relies on a community that makes reliable writers and reliable tools. Minimal acceptable standards we've accepted as a community such as PDFA, these need to be reasonably achievable or they'll remain ignored. PDFA 1A, great idea. Was it really achievable at the time? I think its record of adoption speaks for itself. The best future is one where PDF plays to its strengths. Let's stop trying to be everything to everyone. Let's acknowledge that reliable re visual presentation comes with trade-offs. It comes with rules and boundaries. It comes with complexity. 
it comes with minimal standards. So does archivability. So does universal accessibility. These all require minimum standards from the community. So let's remain flexible where we can. Let's not encourage flexibility where it plays no useful part in the world. And let's, as a community, let's coexist well with technology that solves some problems better than PDF. Let's not think we have to be all tools to all problems. Let's let PDF be strong at its strengths. Let's let other things be strong at their strengths. As a community of PDF practitioners, I implore us, let's be the best at what we are. That's That's my admittedly biased history of PDF, my call to action for a bright and sunny future. With that, I thank you. I'll take any questions. Yes? I think what you said makes perfect sense from your point of view. Does it make sense from Adobe's point of view, though? Because essentially, while they are um, the people who created the standard, um, they also actually in a situation where they gain from the openness of the standards, but they also want to maintain hold over their technologies. So by making the thing more complicated, they actually make it easier to, to actually maintain that, that grip in a way that they couldn't do if it was simpler. Well, of course I can't speak for, you know, for Adobe. Um, but what I will conjecture is that, you know, Adobe has seen over the past couple decades that you know, the rise of the ecosystem of tools and of users, of vendors, of software, really help the format, you know, gain its prominence and to keep its prominence. And I think, you know, Adobe understands that ecosystem is, is really vital for the continued, um, not just vibrancy, but the continued acceptance of PDF. Um, as really the premier uh, portable document format. Uh, so the short answer is I, you know, I, I think, um, you know, Adobe sees a lot of benefit from other actors in the community. If you want someone to speak on behalf of Adobe. Oh, um, thank you, Dove. <laughs> in, in fact, the ecosystem is probably the most important thing. And this goes to almost anything that includes whether you go all the way back to PostScript, and I will admit to have been there, having been there, I've been at Adobe 25 years now, um, or Photoshop, or Illustrator, or InDesign, all these products, not necessarily their file formats, have really uh, relied on ecosystems being built in, uh, built up in terms of not just the users or the consumers, but plugins and added value. Okay, Adobe as a company is not going to it cannot profitably serve every small community that wants to use either PDF or Photoshop or Design, Illustrator, etc. So what's important to us is that we have a central capability to which others can provide added value that they can make money at, that they can serve a community, and that it all works together. So we, we have no problem with the uh, with others working with the format. And I'll tell you one other thing that's rather important. Real big secret. If you don't have competition, you have a problem. If you, if you have a product or a technology that someone isn't trying to do a clone of or whatever, it probably means you don't have anything worth anything. Think about that a bit. So uh, competition is healthy. People who work with us are healthy. And we do not see either of those as negative, but probably very positive. Ah, thank you, Dove. Yeah. yeah, I'm just curious. Um, what the relation uh, the company data logics with the Adobe? It looks like Adobe PDF libraries, uh, the core technology is maintained and developed by the data logics. Is that correct? Uh, data logics brings a, a number of uh, Adobe's. Uh, PDF and, and other technologies to a broader developer market. Yeah. 
Um, Data Logics is, you know, partially owned by Adobe. They, they maintain a, a small share in us, but we act independently. Um, they not, not only uh, license out the uh, PDF library, matter of fact, a lot of the updates that went into it, for example, the first 64 bit version of it came out of Data Logics. They also serve as a conduit of selling Adobe's PDF print engine to some of our smaller OEMs who need a bit more individualized support. I apologize, I'm not the marketing department. Neither am I. Dumb engineer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I know I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. That's why I <laughs> tried to keep my remarks brief. Um, I'm happy to uh, take any other questions, any other comments. If not, let me not stop you from uh, from your lunch. Thank you, everybody. Tomorrow morning on the discussion about PDF tipping standards, we'll get even more juicy stuff related to this history. <laughs> I'm sure your take on history is a bit different than mine. <laughs> too much. some interesting things going on. You know, yeah, a lot it's a, of it's it's in it said so that PDFA was published ten years ago. Yeah. At the moment it's it's more I think more than half of the national archives in the world accept that as a long term yes. preservation format. Mm. So that's a quite a big change. Right. So we're we're you know one heard concerns about you know first version of PDFA not being flexible and, and, enough. And what we, what and is the real maybe problem? Maybe the other way. It's how you create PDFA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, the, that's the big thing. Right, but the tools are coming up. I, I, uh, because yeah. I have, I've just told uh, Thomas Thelman that I'm uh, trying to convert uh, the publication of the association, we have quarterly the publication mm -hmm. and the editor in there. I have, I'm doing that by InDesign and then okay. I'm trying to make the PDF-based. PDF <laughs> PDFA from InDesign? Yeah. Always some, some uh, structures are missing or... Well, you can use pre-flight to... Yeah, I don't know. Actually, you're probably better off to produce PDF-X4. Yeah, and, and then go from that with pre-flight. Yeah, because that's, that's what I tend to hmm. thinking. I mean, will that keep uh, the, no, the what structure? No, what I'm saying is PDF-X4 <laughs> is close enough to PDF-X2 that PDF-A2 you can do it. Oh, no. you want to later? Now, that hasn't um, been the case. I'm, I'm coming from... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I'm trying to do I is do have a background in case printing, etc. Uh, I've been working files. more in the yeah. in other words, there's no in, reason in, in why we should dynamic, code you know, in areas where, the where, um, design you know, such that PDF X exchange documents and, um, close enough that for the business processes actually you know, create a file and not so much in the archives. There's been a lot of focus on and PDF-X4 um, yeah, yeah, for yeah, the best of both. For preservation. So I'm actually yeah, yeah. working as that. Okay. <laughs> but I think there are so very, that, that, very the, the idea would be that in the design, you would be able to say, I want both of these things. 
Yeah. Or maybe even and PDF A, P3 PDF A, PDF or PDF no, UA. Um, mm, yeah, that's, for that's storing so additional data. You know, the you know, of these and how do you see the future? It solves future, a lot of problems you know, whereby you want the damn thing to be written. You, you want you see the there's thing to be officially accepted as archivable by some um, European government bureaucrats. And you want uh, the Section 50 mumble mumble of the US government uh, uh, things that require accessibility and also so you have the best of all worlds. And if you do it, when you create further, but it's a lot um, easier than trying to retrofit it into one of these be used in mm -hmm. between so. for applications to actually one, one elaborate on, on <laughs> through the process. Did you understand my uh, question? I, I do. Um, I, I, I certainly don't think XMP is going away at all. No. Um, I mean, we, we see it, um, you know, poise really to, to yes. play a, a stronger role. You know, the discussion is too yeah. well. Um, well, I'm not looking at the two sides, one of which is um, and that said, metadata is always a specification right of what it side, means. You know. <laughs> it's for the most part always going to lie you know, outside of the PDF standard. Oh, no okay. really and there's, you know, really, you know, room for it. And, you know, really all the mandate for the communities around it. Basically, our uh, our business idea, but, you know, we're just talking about the consistency there's the, the uh, big cool, need cool for hipster and, types, you know. They don't know what pretty is. Back in the old days, you had filer applications. They, so you could keep all the data on the screen. And, and, oh, tomorrow I want to worry about what I did today. Big corporations. Tomorrow. So you could do uh, system uh, integration, uh, very complex and costly. So I'm going in the same way. But in today's world, everything goes faster. There's millions of tools doing almost the same thing. You can't have it. So you have to have a way to communicate this data more. In, in a better way than just doing system integration between well, databases. Right. 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 And, and I think that there's an opportunity to use uh, XMP for this or you know, some vertical application for, for you know, yeah, there's some uh, vertical uh, applications for exchanging and that people use for uh, uh, storing data inside documents. Uh, as a way to not only transfer the documents, but to transfer states of documents, right. states of workflows, and approvals, and digital signatures, etc. You know, on right. logging of uh, history inside the document rather than some kind of. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah, and I, I definitely see um, you know, some workflows that use it to store you know, state and, and other information. Um, and I see some workflows use uh, what's, what's called uh, D parts for storing yes, the specific information. Um, you know, I see some use of keys in D parts, what is D parts? It, it stands for, for document. Long term okay. storage. Uh, okay. It's, it's one way of storing, you know, essentially, application-specific information. You know, people like yeah. Maker yeah. Notes, but yeah. in, in a JPEG or in a, a, a raw format or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, but, a responsibility. You know, and while it's, it's mm. meant for you know, it's, it's application very different specific from that of, information. You know, the web page if you show the, get a the, the, uh, system of applications, group of applications that all whether that's available you don't agree on, mm -hmm. you know, common so, meanings, it's a very powerful mechanism. And things like digital quality. signatures, like <laughs> comments, like document <laughs> revisions, you know, you know we also see you know, a lot of workflows that use the, the standard way. mechanisms that are in the fact for that. that. Um, you know, digital signatures yeah. are, from you know, kind of one built into PDF. Yeah. Um, that is still you know, document revisions readable, are the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so different workflows on the other so hand, you do it you different see ways. That if you being have a PDF file created it's not a dead end. I mean, it's not something that you see that becoming bigger over time. There's a very good chance that you're going to have problems. I mean, that's what I want to hear. Because, you know, I think it's great, but I just don't want to invest in something that is great, but going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So, not that I take your word as a single sort of source of my decision, but at least, you know, I'm interested in that. Like having that. other people's view. Yeah. No, I, I think um, you know, definitely PDFs. Are, it's a strong oh, format you know, with a strong unit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most uh, of my users are only And yeah, I, I like to you know, kind of be the, the curmudgeon word, sometimes you know, with communities. Yeah. yeah, you know, call it out. You know, yeah. Yeah. oh, that's that's you know, very well. put that there. <laughs> Thank you, know, you very much. I, I was see, thinking, of course, in the university. I I see the community just keep getting stronger.
And I, I hope that um, this community includes more people coming with that view on, 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 on process or just, you know, not only you know, the brief graphic arts. Hey, Bert, are you deaf?